What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a meta analysis for the October 2020 format. We just had the conclusion of the Luxury Championship Series 6 and frankly this is probably going to be one of the biggest tournaments we have of the month and it's really the first set of like strong empirical data we have to go by to kind of see the direction that the meta is trending. So we're going to be looking at deck lists, tech choices, and kind of just an overall view of what we can expect to see in the October format. So I hope you guys are ready because let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing I wanted to start off with is a breakdown of the top 16 from this event. The Luxury Championship Series 6 had 135 competitors, so again, not the largest tournament by any means, but again, you have to remember in the online environment, over 100 players is still pretty impressive considering, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh has kind of been in a really weird state for the past several months. But here is your top 16 breakdown on the screen. You can see that Dragon Link is pretty much dominating this top cut at six of the top 16 slots, followed shortly thereafter by dinosaur a lot of people had high hopes in dinosaur and a lot of people are still thinking it is one of the strongest picks so really nice to see that it had a very strong showing i don't think dinosaurs really taken up this much of a top cut representation if ever but if it has it's been a very long time then we have infernoble knight coming up in third place infernoble knight kind of tied with dinosaur really again infernoble knight and dragon link were kind of the front runners as a lot of people were expecting so really cool to see that that's also holding up to be true and then we've got three one of decks we have one l Lich deck, which trust me is nothing like you think it is. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. Then we also have a sub terror deck, another deck that people have kind of written off for the most part, but Dragoon is still one hell of a card. And then finally invoked Dogmatica to wrap up the top 16. And what's incredible is that invoked Dogmatica, in fact, was your first place winner. I've got the list from Zach Stone for you guys to go ahead and check out here. Now, Zach is no stranger to the competitive environment. He's a very seasoned competitive player. He's got multiple tops under his belt, so getting a first place really isn't too shocking here. He's got some really great insights, though, as to why he chose to go this route, you know, in a very combo-heavy based meta when you've got Dragon Link and Infernoble Knight absolutely everywhere. So, I think the big things to note here are the inclusion of cards like Triple Tactical Talent. That's a card that a lot of people were kind of wanting to pivot to once stuff like Called by the Grave was hit on the most recent ban list. Again, Triple Tactical Talent isn't exactly Called by the Grave, but for the purposes of this control deck when you just have a card that's effectively a fourth fifth and sixth copy of pot of greed or in this case pot of desires this deck is looking to control the game and pretty much just out tempo the opponent surely in a resource game and so triple tactical talent is good for that purpose but also duels because of the change of heart application as well just by being able to bait out something like red eyes dark dragoon you can then take control of it and then you can have all the fun with that card but this is looking like a very clean cut invoked dogmatica list for people who don't know what the win condition of this deck is if you are going first if you can set up El Shadal wind up you know most of these combo decks really can't deal with a wind up unless they have something like maybe infinite impermanence and even then Zach would be able to back that wind up with protection to make it even more difficult for the opponent to out so wind having that special summoning restriction and being like that pseudo vanity's emptiness floodgate boss monster that's one of the ways how this deck is able to just excel especially in an environment like this that is so combo heavy when the players might be focusing on other combo decks. You might also notice there's that one copy of Trap Trick in his list. This is a bit spicy. It's effectively a fourth copy of Infinite Impermanence and Dogmatica Punishment if he so sees fit. It's also really a third copy in a way of Ice Dragon's Prison or just another way to kind of get you to these cards because they are all normal traps. So having that flexibility is nice. Dogmatica Punishment is one hell of a trap card and really is the reason why Dogmatica is one of the strongest decks of the format. That's for sure. You'll notice that Droll and Lockbird is also in Zach's side deck. You're going to be seeing a lot of Droll as we go through some of these deck lists, but overall, congratulations to him. It's cool to see a not expected tier one-ish deck to be taking it at the top, and uh, this gives a lot of hope for all the Invoke Dogmatica players out there. But then coming in second place, it should be no surprise that we have Dragon Link. Again, Dragon Link took up a majority of the top 16, and while it did fall a little bit short, it was still able to outperform almost every other deck, and uh, that's what a lot of people were expecting after the most recent Forbidden and Limited list. That deck went pretty much completely unhindered aside from, you know, Halky Fibrax tuners being hit. But as you can see here, Halky Fibrax is still in the extra deck as well as Link Cross, and this deck is doing just fine. Again, as I mentioned with Zach's deck, you can see here three Droll and Lockbird in the main deck. Droll and Lockbird is actually looking to be one of the hand traps of the format because if you hit Dragon Link early enough, uh, it can pretty much just stop their turn entirely. Some players are actually opting with their Dragon Link builds to 
completely minimize the amount of cards that actually search so then that way they don't lose to a card like droll and lockbird also invoke dogmatica does a lot of searching so droll can hit that deck fairly well uh, even dinosaur dinosaur does a fair bit of searching as well and we'll talk about that a little bit later but droll looking to be one of the big highlights in terms of the hand trap lineup moving into the october format we also see here that he has cards like nibiru as well as gamma gamma is still an absolute powerhouse and it's crazy dragon link is so strong that sometimes the board will get nibiru and gamma and it can still play through that in addition to everything else which is just insane but typically in most instances a well-timed gamma or a nibiru can do the trick it also depends on the variant that the players are playing because there are two different builds of dragon link one incorporating Vylon cube that has a much higher ceiling and then this one that we see here that got second place that is a little bit safer the reasoning is because with Vylon cube you actually don't set up a herald of the arc light before going into your christron halki fibrax place so you're a little bit more vulnerable but you're able to end on a much more explosive board but this is still pretty cool to see this is a i believe 47 or excuse me 48 card list and you're going to see these dragon link lists are going to typically play above 40 because they're able to play enough starters and extenders that it doesn't actually affect the math on how often they can combo and by playing a higher count they reduce the likelihood of drawing into their brick cards that they don't want to see so a really cool trend to observe and you know 40 has always been kind of a testament for a lot of people but you might know now that that's the reason for why you're going to see these higher count combo decks is because the math justifies that it actually works out a lot better following that up though i wanted to go ahead and showcase a top eight deck list that is actually a 50 card build here and again you're going to see some similarities compared to the last dragon link list just to give you a little bit of variety here you see again droll in the main deck as well as nibiru looks like william is actually opting to play imperm over gamma which is fine both gamma and impermanence have their pros and cons to them uh william was actually playing triple tactical talents as well just again to either get those extra cards maybe draw into more of those extenders in case his play gets stopped by a hand trap or in the instance of you know if he's going second it's a really good card to help break boards whether you can you know look at your opponent's hand to get rid of any other disruption or be able to use that change of heart effect because it is absolutely broken but dragon link is still looking to be the strongest deck of the format and this tournament again it is still early on and the meta is going to shift but just from preliminary results dragon link is a hundred percent the deck to beat but let's get to a deck that you guys are going to be super hyped to see and that is dinosaur this was a top four list and this was a going second top four list at that look at the amount of hand traps in here we have droll nibiru gamma we even have gizmek uka gizmek uka is still just as effective as it was before you still see your opponent making christian halki fibrax which is a water gizmek uka can hit the field you can special summon barrier statue of the torrent from your deck your opponent is basically locked out of special summoning and they're not going to be able to do anything about it they pass the turn you link off into area the water charmer and then you can do whatever the hell you want and playing dinosaur it's going to be very easy to play count to 8000 and otk your opponent now one piece of tech that i absolutely love in this deck is survival's end this was actually one of the super rares from the dino smashers fury structure deck that really never got a chance to see a lot of play but it is now and that is solely because of link Ross. so for people who don't know survival's end reads that when it's activated you destroy all normal monsters on the field then you get to special summon dinosaur monsters from your deck equal to the number of normal monsters destroyed and guess what when your opponent summons those link Ross tokens those tokens are normal monsters so not only do you get to wipe their tokens you get to special summon two monsters on top of it one of which could be something like let's say petite pteranodon and then the second effect of survival's end allows you to banish it from the grave pop one of your dinosaurs as well as one monster your opponent controls so you have another interruption there there and be able to pop your own petite pteranodon means that after you do that you can then summon dino wrestler pancratops from your deck for yet another interruption like that's insane like especially if you know you're going to be going first and you know your opponent's playing a combo deck that takes advantage of link Ross. that is such a cool interaction and i definitely think this is going to start to see a lot more play because it's rather difficult to play around this especially right now when not a lot of people know about it so you might want to use that to your advantage i did also want to show another dinosaur deck that managed to make the top 16 of this tournament up uh, very similar to the previous list that we just saw it's still running a ton of hand traps so we have the drolls the nabirus the gammas the impermanences this deck is also actually just playing two copies of mystic mind just to 100 percent win the game for no reason and i think that's great at a combo heavy meta game where players aren't playing spell and trap removal in the form of a spell and trap card why would you not want to play mystic mind and with dinosaur especially it's even better too because then you can set up the mind pretty much shut
shut all their stuff off, then you can just drop Tyranno and basically just win the game. But now we're going to move on to yet another tier one deck that did very well in this event, and that is Infernoble Knight. This is a top four list piloted by Lundratine. If that name sounds familiar, I recently had him on the channel with his second place Megalith deck profile. Uh, that was obviously when Block Dragon was still legal, but now it looks like he's moved on to yet another combo deck being Infernoble Knight. And this is actually a very, very interesting take on the list. This is not what you would typically expect because normally you expect this deck like Infernoble Knight to go into stuff like Borderlord Savage Dragon and the like. But this deck is actually focusing on doing what the old Eldritch Synchro decks did. And that is going into the level and rank nine package to be able to draw a ton of cards with Crocodile Dragon and then be able to overlay into a copy of True King of All Calamities. But you can also back that up with an Infernoble Emperor Charles. In addition to that, for yet another way to pretty much just checkmate your opponent. That is just so cool. It's so neat to see these decks kind of trying to evolve and kind of break from their traditional patterns. And I just absolutely love it. Now, next up, we're going to talk about a deck that I actually underestimated going into this format, and that is Guru Control. And it's not just Guru Control. Of course, it's going to incorporate Dragoon. But when you look at this list, it's pretty standard when it comes to Guru Control, aside from, you know, the brand new incorporation of the Dragoon engine. But you have some new tech like the new Ice Dragon's Prison, which is an incredibly powerful tool against a lot of the metagame. As a matter of fact, there's so many applications for Ice Dragon's Prison right now. We saw that actually being played in uh, the Invoke Dogmatica list that took first place. So that might be a card that starts to trend upward as a result of these results. But one of the things that really fascinates me about a control deck like Guru is that you're able to take something like Red Eyes Dark Dragoon and use it to protect a card like, let's say, there can be only one. And it's one of the most unfair interactions imaginable because your opponent's not going to have the ability to be able to put resources on the field to deal with Dragoon because Dragoon can just protect that there can be only one and just put you in such a powerful position, especially playing a deck like Guru Control, having all these different options at your disposal. It is just absolutely nasty. The interesting thing is that this is actually the first list I believe we've seen that is playing Dragoon. So Dragoon not having the major impact on the format that a lot of people first thought, at least at first glance, we're going to see how the format progresses throughout the rest of the month. But again, Dragoon's still going to be running around everywhere, but not really doing too much, at least in terms of the higher echelons of competitive play. And then last but not least to wrap up the LCS. Oh my God, this is an absolute abomination of a deck, but it managed to get top 16 and it is Eldritch. So I did want to show it. Welcome to 60 card Eldritch Synchro Turbo the deck. I don't even think it's synchro. I think it's just like make the biggest possible board with Eldritch imaginable. This is just an absolute amalgamation of like just good stuff 60 cards dot deck. You're playing a ton of hand traps to be able to slow the opponent down. I mean, the whole top row of this deck is hand traps plus the three imperm in the bottom right corner. But then you just have pretty much every single card in here that isn't an Eldritch card that's going to help you get to and resolve Christron Halky Fibrax. I mean, that's essentially what this deck is trying to do. And then you've got stuff like the Dragon goon components as well to again just help you end on just an absolutely absurdly powerful board but then you also have the control style of the deck as well because you're playing eldritch so after you establish that crazy board you can play a little bit of a mid to long game because the eldritch cards are going to help get you there this is so cool this is absolutely crazy i knew someone was going to try to make combo eldritch work but I didn't think it was going to look this ugly, but congratulations to Robert for this one. This one's pretty cool. Now, before we wrap up the video, I did want to talk about a few decks that I saw from a small remote dual tournament that Carloncho Store actually hosted. Shouts to them. They're great for always getting deck profile pictures up for me to use in these videos. But the first of which is, guess what? Ad Emancipator. Yeah, Ad Emancipator is still definitely playable. Now, is it going to be nearly as powerful as Dragon Link or Infernoble Knight or any other of the combo decks in the format? Probably not, but again, Block Dragon being gone doesn't mean the deck is unplayable. Again, it did take first place, and yeah, you have to take these results with a grain of salt, but nonetheless, I think Adam Emancipator is still a very decent option. Even if it is a rogue pick, it's definitely still going to be around. Now, the second deck I wanted to talk about was a dinosaur deck, which really isn't too surprising that this got second place, but what is interesting is that it's actually incorporating the Samorg combo to be able to summon a barrier statue of the Stormwind to, again, lock your opponent 
out of playing the game, similar to something like Gizmek Uka, as well as Barrier Statue of the Torrent. This is something I personally don't think I've seen in Dinosaur before, and I think it's a really cool way to be able to kind of just capitalize on going first, because Dinosaur is already very good at going second. It's going first place aren't even terrible when you have like Ultimate Conductor Tyranno plus Dolka. Like a lot of people have trouble dealing with a board like that, but if you just lock them out of being able to special summon, period, that's just even better, right? So congrats to him for getting second. And then for the last deck I wanted to discuss, if you haven't already figured it out, oh boy, you know what's coming because it is Sky Striker, baby. I actually think Sky Striker is a pretty decent pick for this format, especially because people are still trying to figure the format out. It's a very good deck being able to mold around whatever the format shapes up to be just because the engine is just so good on its own. The Sky Striker cards are just incredibly overpowered and then being able to play hand traps to slow the opponent down so that they can play your game. Uh, Kagari and Widow Anchor are at three again and yeah, engage is banned, but like Sky Striker did just fine last format as well. Keep your eyes on this one. I don't think Sky Striker is going anywhere anytime soon and there are dedicated players out there that are going to ensure that this deck will continue to see play. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for this meta analysis. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.